Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. And as usual, I have multiple cards to share with you guys. So first off, I started with a full sheet of heavyweight white cardstock and I cut it in half and then cut it in half again. So I've got four pieces of white cardstock here that are four and a quarter by five and a half. So of course that means I'm gonna make four cards. <laughs> so I have my little um, Wendy Vecchi uh, make art station here because I don't wanna tape down this stencil. The stencil is Honeybee's Snowfall stencil because I plan on, of course, using multiple colors, etc. So I want everything to be as kind of portable and movable as possible so I can clean off between the different colors. So I am going to hold the stencil in place with the magnets that came with this, just so that it's kind of like temporary. Usually I'll tape things down with washi tape, etc. But I need to be able to move this stencil and remove it and clean it because I'm going to use four different colors of Nouveau Glacier paste. I've had lots of people asking me about this. It's kind of, I'm not sure when it came on the market, but recently. And it's different. It, this is definitely one of those things, though, you almost need to experience it in person. The consistency is very thin, kind of like really, really soft butter, I guess is the easiest way to explain it. It's much softer than I expected it to be. Um, the other thing is it's not, not at all like glitter paste. That was the other big question I was getting is a lot of people asking like, how, why is it, how is this different from, you know, the glitter paste that I use a lot? Um, one, this doesn't have glitter in it at all. It actually has mica flakes in it, which when cleaning off, they kind of do tend to get everywhere, but it's not the same as glitter. Like mica is a completely different product. So the mica just kind of wears away, I guess, in a sense. So I applied this, the paste. This first one was um, Quicksilver. And again, when it goes on, it looks one way. It dries completely different. <laughs> so I was working really hard and getting a really smooth application, a really even application. So I was using, I would start with the uh, Nouveau Media spatula here just to, you know, get it out of the container and kind of spread it on. And then I'm using a Thermal Web. This is just a little stencil pal. Um, just to give it, you know, this perfect, thin, even, consistent coat. Um, I honestly expected it to dry much more dimensional, but totally unnecessary. I honestly wonder if you even need to get like an even, like if it would matter if you're, you know, if I just applied it with a spatula there and you see like there's a bit of like raised areas, lower areas, if that would even matter. Um, when I show the dried backgrounds, you'll see what I mean. But I just used both. I was kind of fiddling around with the stencil. Well, this is the first time I've ever used this too. So with the magnets, it's a little bit, I was fiddling, but in the end, the results are worth it. So that also helped remove a lot of the excess that I would just put back in the jars. All of these jars, I use press and seal on. You could use regular like plastic wrap, you know, cling, cling wrap, anything like that. Um, these, it's because of the nature of these types of paste and they're water-based, um, they, can, they can and will dry out a lot quicker. So I like to seal any containers like this, same with glitter paste, etc. cetera, um, by adding that layer of the press and seal. Again, you could use cling foam, whatever, cling film. Um, it just kind of ensures that there's that extra seal around it so that these won't dry out. So I, and I just kind of keep, I'm just careful when I remove it. So I just don't have to ever grab another piece. I just keep reusing the same piece over and over on the container. So all, all in all, I'm gonna use four different colors on these backgrounds because I was just curious to see how they would look. So I end up using like a Quicksilver, uh, Sea Sprite. This one is Frostbite, this like really pale frosty blue. And method was the same with all of them. I would apply the paste with the media spatula and then I would, you know, smooth everything out with the little stencil pal tool. Um, you could just use a regular palette knife like I've used in a bunch of videos. I think either one would work just fine. And then after I had it all applied, I would scrape the excess back in the container, um, seal up the container, wipe off my tools and the stencil itself, I was just taking to the sink and quickly rinsing off. This product, this glacier paste, does seem to clean up a lot easier as well than glitter paste. Glitter paste can be tricky <laughs> if you let that dry at all. It it's, it's like permanent. It just fuses itself to everything. Whereas this was a lot easier. Like there's still a bit of like shimmer 
on this stencil after I was done with the, this project, but for the most part, it came off really, really easily. So I just kept going along with each card front here, cleaning up the stencil, making sure it was dry, applying it over the cardstock, holding it in place, and then applying the glacier paste. Um, this one is the golden era. Online, it looks very yellow in the container. It, it's not, it's very much gold. Um, and like I titled this video, like foiled backgrounds, this is what it's gonna look like. So it goes on very, I wouldn't call it dull per se, but the way it looks when you first apply it versus the way it looks when it dries, completely different thing. I was really pleasantly surprised. Like I liked how it looked regardless. I thought this is just really pretty. I like the consistency. There's that bit of shimmer with the mica flakes, but it's not glitter like a glare paste. So it's very different, but as it dries, I don't know what kind of magic's in this stuff. It's amazing. So anyway, um, after I had finished all of these, I am, um, I clean all my tools off, etc., And then I set all of these aside to dry and they took, I think they got, they sat for a couple hours. I'm not sure how long it's recommended, but I know for me, they sat for about a couple hours and look at this, like, look at this. <laughs> It literally looks foiled. Like it dried so flat. Like that's what really surprised me. Like there's just, there's no, hardly any raised areas at all. So I don't know. I'm, that's where I, what I meant when I said I'm curious about whether or not if you applied it thicker, how it would look. But when it dries, it literally looks foiled. It is, this is, is the neatest stuff I've used. I was quite happy with this. So I'm hoping full release more colors. There's two other colors available. There's a red and a green as well. But because I was doing like snowflake backgrounds, I didn't want to use either of those. But now I'm really curious to see how they look. <laughs> Anywho, set all those aside. For my main sentiments here, I'm using the Honeybee Season to Sparkle stamp set. I have four pieces of the same white cardstock. And I am using my mini Misty for this. And I'm just stamping this large sentiment onto these pieces of cardstock. The They're just scraps of cardstock. They're not, you know, cut perfectly because I'm going to die cut these anyway. So it doesn't matter. But with all these pieces, I'm doing my anti-static powder tool, brushing off the excess, inking up the stamp with uh, clear embossing ink. And then I'm heat embossing them with several different colors of Nouveau embossing powder because I went through my drawer of embossing powders. And I found I had two that were very close to those um, glacier paste. So I have some like cool jade and serenity blue embossing powders. This one is the cool jade. And then I'm going to do a silver and a gold, of course. So again, my typical kind of process when doing multiple cards, they do everything at once. So I did all the backgrounds at once. Now I'm doing all the stamping and the sentiments and heat embossing at once. Makes things go a lot smoother. Even then, my desk is an absolute disaster even though I film videos for a living, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the, work, the workable space always works down to, you know, that one square foot, if that. So, anywho, I keep going along and stamping the cardstock with that same sentiment. There's other sentiments, obviously, in the set and coordinating dies and everything, but I just, I really liked this one and it just went really well, of course, with the, the way these, like, foil backgrounds end up, like, all sparkly. So I end up using um, one different color of embossing powder for each piece because I decided to, you know, keep everything kind of consistent. And then um, I'm also going to do the exact same thing for the insides of all the cards. So once I've got all of those um, Tis the Season to Sparkle sentiments stamped, now I've got my card bases and I have to flip over, like flip my Misty around. I think this is the way it's intended to be used is in this. Uh, I never use my Misties like this. Like I always have the lid on my left, not on my right. Like to me, this feels backwards, but this is the only way to do it with a um, side folding card. So I'm stamping another sentiment from that season to, season to sparkle stamp set. Same process using my anti-static powder tool, brushing off the excess, inking up this stamp with the clear embossing ink, and then heat embossing it with all those same embossing powders. And all of them, I'm just using a coffee filter for that and then like funneling back all the embossing powder back into the container. And this is all I'm gonna do on the insides of the cards because this stamp is like nice and large and graphic. 
So I like ones like this because they're so perfect, especially if I'm making like a ton of holiday cards, etc. I like to be able to just stamp and go, not have to add a whole bunch of elements to feel like the insides of my cards are finished because I always have to finish the insides. But one like this is just nice and yet doesn't take up too much space. So I can easily write around the sentiment and we're good to go. So I kept going through the little process here to stamp these sentiments on the insides of my cards. All these cards are four and a quarter by five and a half. So standard A2 sized cards. So that also kind of give you an idea of how big these sentiments are. Like they're just, I like nice heft. I like all sentiments. You can never have too many sentiments. I've been saying that for 15 years now. <laughs> you can never have too many sentiments when it comes to card making. So yeah, but I really like like large hefty sentiments like this with this sort of mix and the handwritten look and all that stuff. So after I was done all of my stamping, I'm now going to die cut these little main sentiments. Like I said, there's a coordinating wafer die set for this stamp set. And I die cut that sentiment with its coordinating wafer die. And then I backed all of those um, sentiments with foam tape. And then the actual stenciled panels, I cut down to just slightly smaller than A2 sized and I'm adhering them to each card base with some craft tacky glue and then I'm going to pop up the sentiment with that foam tape. So that just gives it that little extra bit of dimension and I made sure that each of the like stencil backgrounds matched up with the embossed sentiment I'm using on the front as well as on the inside of the card because more often than not, the amount of times I've done that and not paid enough attention because I'm flying by the seat of my pants and I'd hear the wrong card front to the wrong card base. That wouldn't be a problem if you're doing everything all in, you know, one color theme. One, that would make things go a lot faster. Um, and two, you wouldn't have to worry about mess ups. But as usual, I like to see what all the colors look like. So, and I just, this also makes it more fun in a sense when I'm not quite mass producing, but making multiples of something similar. So I went along and adhered all of those panels, popped on all of the sentiments. And then as a final little bit of embellishment, I'm just going to add some Nouveau Crystal Gems just for that final little bit of sparkle. So we've got the like really reflective shine of the background and then the sparkle and then the kind of glossy effect of the... Uh, sentiments that have been heat embossed and that is going to finish off all of these cards. So I went along and heated everything and then that was that. So if you are interested in any of the supplies I used, etc, um, the pictures, all that stuff, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. See what I mean with that just foiled look. With, and this was just glacier paste. You know, I didn't have to fiddle with a laminator. Me and foil still have a love-hate relationship. But this is something I can do. It's super easy. Really love it. Need to play some more with it. <laughs> so, anywho. All the info will be in the description box below the video as well as on my blog. So, you can check that out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate the support. And I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye.